why are we doing taxon works together? And this is kind of a big over, overview of, of what we're hoping to achieve. We had lots of internal discussions as to um, how we know this was a successful meeting or not. And this sort of just boils down that conversation. So of course we want to raise awareness about taxon works and point out to the broader community that these resources exist, uh, the software itself, other information about biodiversity informatics, etc. We want to promote understanding about what taxon works is and equally important what taxon works is not. We hope that the discussions that we have this week will help us prioritize the work we do on taxon works. And that's really a question that we need to, uh, or a conversation that we need to have with the community, you out there, um, as to what you really need. We think of everyone in the taxon works community as collaborators, and we're really trying to identify how we can help each other at different levels, not just um, helping use the software, but helping document the software, helping code the software, et cetera. Um, and I think the group we have here and the collaborators we have are extremely imaginative, imaginative people. Uh, we think of lots of things, but a big, um, element of what we want to do is be transparent in terms of what can actually be done in taxon works and uh, what we're anticipating and hoping to have done in taxon works. So a big part of this meeting is just being transparent to the broader community about what taxon works is, does, means, etc. So what is so what is taxon works? We'll just step back and say a couple of things. Really, you're going to get the feel for that by participating throughout the week. But it's important to note that Taxon Works comes out of the Species Fog group. Uh, this is an endowed group. Uh, the person responsible for the endowment is not listed here. It's a retired entomologist that came out of a private business. Um, and he's happy to step back in the shadows right now. That endowment hires or pays for around uh, nine full-time members. And we also have more or less full-time work with Heidi. She's listed here as well um, at an hourly level. We have a community liaison. We have people working with the catalog of life, uh, global names. We have two people responsible for many of the best things in Taxon Works down in Argentina, Jose and Hernan. Uh, Jose is our interface developer and, he's, and Hernan does a lot of work across the whole sort of software stack. Um, so we are composed of biologists that have basically become informatics specialists. And over the last 20 years, we've worked on a lot of software projects and we've done a lot of different things and have a, quite a lot of collective experience between our group. So that's the species file group. Taxon Works comes out of the evolution of a number of different projects. Uh, as people came together under, under the umbrella of, of the species file group. Early on, a lot of us worked on some of the very early biological databases. I helped write the TAMU the TAMU insect collection database that um, is still actively used in part now. As part of my graduate work, uh, we wrote a lot of desktop databases to help us do the taxonomy that we wanted to do. And we wrote a lot of personal scripts. And over time, as we sort of evolved, a number uh, there was sort of three parallel projects that emerged that are the precursors, sort of the first or second generation of the software that is now Taxon Works. Species File Group produced the Orthoptera species file and then took that technology and started sharing it to other interested parties. That was the original um, work of, the, uh, of our original endow endowment, um, the person who provided the endowment. Dmitry Dmitriev produced 3i to meet his own needs and then shared that as well to other people. And I worked on a project called MX that was a workbench for taxon taxonomists, et cetera, that went on to serve a broad number of need needs. All three of those projects are, are now being merged into Taxon Works, and we're at various different stages of moving the data and the technology behind those projects into Taxon Works. And our Taxon Works is also highly influenced by the Global Names Project led by Dimitri Mozarin, part of our group. He's done a lot of the backend architecture. He's responsible for 
all, uh, most of the architecture of the Encyclopedia of Life. So he brings a huge amount of experience to our group. Jeff um, Orr and Yuri Reskov um, are also working and contribute to Taxon Works. They are core members of the Catalog of Life, and they also have a strong degree of influence on the project, both from coding and design principles, et cetera, as well. So the scope, as many of you probably know, of Taxon Works, we're looking at taxonomy, biological systematics. We do work with natural history collections, um, but we can also think of it as being more broadly applicable to many different ways of describing life. The kinds of observations that we can record would meld with uh, ecological studies, uh, biological studies, etc. If you want to see more, we'll post this chat, but you can get a brief idea of the concepts by going to stats.taxonworks.org and seeing some of what we work on there. I'm not going to say too much about the next couple of slides. You can go to them. They're shared through the link in the Google Notes. Um, but we do think a lot about sort of the bigger picture and what we're doing. And I'll just let you go through these so that we can get to the other uh, talks that are coming this morning. Um, we do think of Taxon Works as a workbench, uh, something that uh, as a tool that you need to work with. Um, but that workbench is specifically geared to encourage you, um, sometimes strongly encourage you to work together. And um, we often think of taxonomists as uh, sort of lone individuals or um, curators as kind of on their own. And we're really trying to think about ways to help us all work together in a number of different aspects. We should mention that Dimitri and I, Dimitri Dimitriev and I both come out of the NSFP project. And a big core of that project was to teach people to um, teach people taxonomy from the perspective of somebody who is retiring and to sort of pass on that expertise. And we really like to think of taxon works as a way to record your lifetime's work that was one of our goals. And so that you could hand off that database in addition to all the conversations you have with your peers and your mentors. Um, I'll say more about what taxon is and isn't on Wednesday during the sort of state of the union talk. And I'll expand on that. But you can get an idea of its scope kind of by looking at the word cloud here. You can see that there's a lot of words uh, surrounding work, um, the parts of your research workflow that, that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And Taxon Works then produces a lot of different types of output. And we'll say more about the bigger context and what Taxon Works isn't on Wednesday. So Today and this week, we're really hoping to tell you what Taxon Works is through interactive stories. We'll have show and tell this week. We'll have a broader conversation about biodiversity informatics communities with some guest speakers on Tuesday. We'll also have a specific nomenclature section then. We'll have a State of the Union. We'll talk about matrices and a casual chill time Wednesday. We'll talk about collecting specimen handling and digitization on Thursday. And then Friday, we'll have a technical unconference, but I really wanna emphasize that everybody is welcome there. We really try to bridge the gap between technical, uh, so to speak, we're all technical, but technical code-wise and non-technical people in that regard. So that is what I have. And now we want to jump to the real meat and the real, um, insights from our guest speakers today. So I will stop sharing my screen. And I want to do a very quick poll so everybody here knows who's in the audience. So we have 52% of the room is learning about tax on works for the first time. So uh, acronyms, right? People, people that are new will not know a lot of the acronyms that we might otherwise throw about. Um, Please share with us your motivation for attending Tax on Works. Aha, 94% to learn more. Yeah. Yay. Cool. Uh, that learn more. So we're, that really re emphasizes that please do ask your questions in the chat, in the, um, in the Google Doc. The best way for us to get to the point and get to what you want to learn about is to, for us to see those questions. And the last question is, what communities do you identify with? And we see if, if the community that you identify with was not there, let us know, put that in. The, if you were like 
but there's no box for me to check. Um, question number know. question number three did not show up on my poll. Ah, okay. Maybe there's a scrolling issue there. Yeah, who knows? All right. Um, thank you very much for participating in that. I hope that helps the presenters that are about to share with us their perspective, um, who their audience is, and helps us too. Thank you. Oh, first up is Chris Dietrich. I'm Chris Dietrich. I've been at the Natural History Survey for almost 30 years, about 20, 26, 27 years. I work on leaf hoppers and related insects, systematics, phylogenetics based on morphology and molecular data. My main use of taxon works so far has been uh, to manage morphological data matrices for in support of morphology-based taxonomic revisionary projects. So um, I'm just gonna, I don't have any slides. I'm just gonna show you some of the stuff that I'm actually doing in Taxon Works right now. Uh, so can everybody see my screen? Yep. Okay, so this is what I see when I log in to Taxon Works with my user ID. I basically um, get this Akinrinka database which is something that Dimitri created. It's basically a comprehensive nomenclatural database for all Achenorhynchus insects, Achenorhynchus semiprin insects. Um, so that's nice. I don't have to worry about dealing with the nomenclatural issues of my group so far. That's something that Dimitri has pretty much been taking care of. So Basically, what I'm trying to do is fill in a lot of additional data for, for these individual taxa. And so um, when, when I log into TaxonWorks, I get all these options for different tasks that I can do. I've got my favorites that I've starred, and these are a the few things that I do the most. Um, and so one of these is this observation matrix hub. And this basically shows you all the different data matrices that we have in TaxonWorks right now. Um, the one at the top is an image matrix, and it's basically just illustrations of all the taxa that we have illustrations for so far. So it's a huge, giant thing um, that shows basically standard, standard images of, of the different um, groups that we're dealing with, and I don't know if this is going to load. Uh, probably, take, it's, it's huge, so it takes a long time. So I'll show you one of the smaller matrices, and that's for this genus Scapatopius, which has 181 species so far. Um, and only 52 columns, the rows are the taxa for OTUs, the, the columns are the um, <clears throat> characters. And for this, we're using um, just discrete morphological characters, qualitative characters. So if we click on uh, edit, we, we get this screen. And basically, here's all the species. Here's all the characters over on the right. Um, and so uh, if we want to go in and we want to score one of these taxa for these different characters, we just click on one of these little blue circles that has a little hex on in it next to one of the taxa. And we get a form like this basically. And so we just go down the list and we click on the appropriate character state for that taxon and <clears throat> until we have them all scored. Um, and then um, let's see if I can... Uh, sometimes the the back arrows don't work the way you expect them to do on, on Taxon where sometimes it opens up a new tab and sometimes it, it just goes to the next form from the same tab. And so um, you have to kind of get, get used to that. Um, if you wanna look at one of the character states and edit that, you can click on, on the little pencil and it gives you the type of character, it gives you the character, basically the character description, and then the states of that character, you can go in and you can add um, <clears throat> or edit the, the states. Um, you can 
<clears throat> click here and you can look at depictions. This particular state doesn't have a depiction, which would be an illustration of that state. So let me see if I can go back and find one that actually <clears throat> does have a depiction. Let's just look at this one. I know this one does, but that one's not showing me. So there's something wrong here. Anyway, um, but this, so it's, it's really convenient to be able to edit a matrix using, using this form if you already have the matrix set up. Um, if you want to add something new to the matrix, you can click on one of these buttons up here <clears throat> to add an, either a new descriptor, which is basically a new character, or a new OTU. Um, and let's just go back and we can look at what the actual interactive key looks like. Um, and yeah, the back button's not working for some reason. So I'm just going to go back to the dashboard here, or no, the, the hub. Okay. Let's just. Yes, it, it looks like it froze on me. <laughs> that happens sometimes. Too many other people are using the system, I guess. Well, I think it's also, it's, I have problems when I'm like a meeting. It, like it this says a web page is slowing down Firefox. Yeah. Chris, that's probably because you tried to open the giant image matrix. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for that. No, okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's not your fault. Go back. Okay, let's go back to um, the hub. And we'll go to the interactive key. And yeah, so this, it basically, um, this interface looks pretty much exactly like the one in 3i. If any of you used 3i before, basically, it gives you a list of all the characters in the key here. Gives you all the taxa, <clears throat> and yeah, it's going. It's still going really slow here. So, um, so you can select the character state from the drop down here, or you can, um, if there are illustrations, you can click on the <clears throat> the blue text describing the character, and then you can just select one of these states that looks like your specimen, and then apply. And then it basically searches for everything that, that has that state and gives you all the taxes that are remaining. So basically, I selected one character. I've narrowed it down from 116 to 65 taxa. And I can keep going with another character here. Um, and just select that one. And, um, I'm down to 21. And if I, I keep doing that, eventually, I, ideally, I'll get down to a single species. If I'm lazy, I can just click this select button, and then I can <clears throat> select all of them. And then I can um, view all the pictures of those particular taxa. And I can decide, OK, I think it's this one. And then it gives me a description of the taxa. It gives me all the nomenclature up here. It gives me all the images um, <clears throat> description. It gives me the distribution data, whatever's in the database already, and a distribution map. Uh, Chris? So that's, that's pretty much what it yeah. looks like in 3i. Um, the only issue now is that <clears throat> None of this stuff is publicly accessible. So the only way you can get access to it is uh, you have to have a tax on works account and you have to have access to this particular database. Um, so I'm waiting for you guys to kind of push some of this, some of these interfaces to the public so that I can show everybody else in the world all the cool stuff that we're doing behind the scenes here in TaxonWorks. So I think I'll stop there. That's I probably take yeah. more than my five minutes. So. Yes, but we it worked as a very lovely introduction. Okay. And thank you. Lily Hart was on your list. Thanks, John. Lily. Please do introduce yourself. Thank you, Mark. Hi. Yes. Hi. 
Thanks everyone for coming to my presentation and thanks for inviting me to talk today. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm Lily Hart. I graduated from U of I in 2017 and I started at the Illinois Natural History Survey as a volunteer. Um, and that's when we used the Access and FileMaker database. Um, I am now an insect collection assistant and aquatic entomology research assistant. And I have used taxon work since March of 2020 when you know we all kind of got locked down and we were all working from home. And Debbie informed me that I was number two on the time spent on taxon works list. And I so I looked it up and I've made over 20,000 records so far. So that's I thought I was impressed with myself there. Um, so the comprehensive specimen digitization task in taxon works is by far my most used task. Um, a lot of my work deals with digitizing specimens um, for and gathering their data for use in studies and publications. And I so some of the features of uh, comprehensive that make my life a lot easier. I would say are the lock feature and the collecting event feature allows just for quicker databasing and consistency in each specimen. Add to container is very helpful helpful for multiple bio curation. So whether that's males and females or males and immatures, any kind of combination of those in the same vial. Um, since I deal a lot with aquatics, that is very helpful. Uh, depictions in comprehensive specimen digitization is really nice for reference to say labels that are illegible or labels that can be interpreted in many different ways, like an H that might look like an N. If you have a handwritten label, a depiction of that is, um, very helpful to have in the online database. And searching in comprehensive specimen digitization for collection objects is very simple. And I like that, you know, I like the layout of the page and that all of the information is right there. And if you have a depiction, it's right there. You can click on it and it, you know, blows up for you. Uh, the clipboard also is, really convenient when you have, you know, a series of catalog um, catalog numbers or, you know, collection objects that you're digitizing that maybe they don't all have the same information. They might have different data, like a different locality here or there. In the clipboard, you can copy and paste different information so that you're not constantly retyping information and you can just go back and forth very easily. Um, one thing in Comprehensive that I, I currently don't use at this time is generate labels. I don't know if it's um, fully functional yet, but um, we have our own way of making labels. But in the future, I'm curious to see how that will work and maybe that'll make it a lot simpler. Um, so like I mentioned before, another uh, part of my job is gathering data from all of the specimens that I'm digitizing and putting into the TaxonWorks database. Um, so that allows you, yeah, to search for specimens or collection objects that you have already created or that someone else has created and just gathering bulk data. And you can download it in CSV or um, Darwin core file. You can easily search for loan items, which we did a lot of that last month, getting our backlogged loans sent out before the holiday season. Um, some updates or I guess enhancements, I would call it, that I would like to see in the filter collection objects task are like a layout settings or reorder fields function like there is in comprehensive. So the ability to maybe hide certain fields of data that I don't need to download or a way to 
freeze the top row of like the title data fields while I'm scrolling down. Um, because it can get kind of confusing when I'm looking at, you know, a set of data and dates or names. You know, I'm not seeing if that's like the date it was collected or the date it was identified. Um, so yeah, freezing that top row would be very helpful when I'm scrolling around. Lily, that's yep. what you've got like one minute left. So oh, okay. Um, last part quick. Yeah, so just some other ones that I use, some other tests I use are edit loans, browse nomenclature. Um, that helps to add new species that aren't already in taxon works while I'm digitizing. Um, new collecting event allows you to add collection collecting events from like an accession book or a journal, a field journal prior to digitizing all of your specimens. So that locality information is already in the system. And collection object match task I use a lot and that saves me a lot of time um, transferring collection objects from like an old collecting event to a new one or an old determination to a new one. Um, yeah, and I think that's about it. Thank you very much. So uh, I'm uh, Jim Woolley. Uh, I'm a professor emeritus at Texas A&M University, and I work on taxonomy and uh, classification, phylogenetics, evolutionary biology of uh, microhymenoptera, particularly uh, the superfamily Chalcidoidea. So do you see the presentation? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. So, uh, as I said, uh, John Harrity and I are going to give two different uh, presentations on what we've been doing with the Universal Chalcidoidea database. And I'm going to give a kind of a broad brush overview, and then Har Harrity is going to kind of dig into the details uh, a, a little bit more. But first, uh, just an introduction to uh, chalcidoids, the most uh, uh, interesting and uh, beautiful and uh, useful insects on the planet. Uh, this is a super family containing about 23 families, depending on how you count them, uh, a little over 28,000 currently valid species. Uh, most species, virtually all of them really, are parasitoids of, of other insects. That is, they lay eggs and attack other insects, uh, or a lot of them are associated with galls. But because they are uh, parasitoids of other insects, they're uh, very important in the uh, natural and biological control of, in of insect pests. For example, this, uh, this little cutie on the uh, lower right here, that, thing, that, that bug's about a millimeter long. Uh, that's, uh, that species was uh, imported to, uh, uh, from India into South Texas to control Rhodes grass mealy bug. In the, uh, in the 60s, and uh, it has resulted in almost complete biological control of Rhodes grass mealy bug. And it's estimated that it saves uh, up to hundreds of millions of dollars a year in uh, re reduced uh, pesticide uh, applications and increased uh, cattle production. So these things are very, very important to, uh, to agriculture and uh, in natural systems. Now, the Universal Chalcidoidea database was created by, uh, by this young man. Uh, John Stuart Noyes at the uh, Natural History Museum in, in London, and uh, he's worked there most of his career, and uh, he uh, inherited a card catalog of calcidoid species uh, and taxonomic data from, uh, from his, uh, one of his colleagues, and so he put together a database uh, in, in Paradox, I believe many of you old-timers may know the, the program, uh, and it's, it's virtually complete. Uh, it has all calcidoid species at least up to about uh, March uh, 2019. And uh, it, it's based on, uh, well, you see the number there, over 56,000 publications, which go all the way back to the beginning of, of zoological nomenclature. So this very quick, now this has been served online by the Natural History Museum, and it very quickly became an essential resource both for taxonomists, but also for researchers in biological control uh, and, and agriculturalists, because there's a lot of information in the database about uh, associates, hosts that these parasitoids are attacking and so forth. Uh, so there is some urgency to the work that we're doing with taxon works, uh, because although this is still being served by the Natural History Museum, 
it's essentially a static resource there. The last updates were in March 2019. And, uh, and, the, and, the, and the Natural History Museum has announced that they're going to pull the plug on it at some point due to security concerns. So here's what it looks like, uh, UCD London. I'm just going to go through this very quickly. Uh, it, it's got, uh, uh, you, can, you can get to the taxonomic history and find the valid names uh, for uh, genus and species group uh, uh, taxa. You can browse uh, through these 56,000 references. Uh, there's a lot of media images and, and videos there. Uh, one thing that's very important for uh, biocontrol workers is to be able uh, to uh, find the associates of a named calcidoid. In other words, for a particular calcidoid species, what, what, other, what, what are the insect hosts that it's known to attack? And I should say that the green arrows represent things that are pretty much fully implemented in, in UCD at Taxon Works. Uh, this one uh, is sort of partially uh, implemented. And uh, then there's a couple of other things that are, are useful uh, that, that we really don't, have not quite replicated the function in, uh, in UCD at Taxon Works uh, yet. I should say that there's a lot of functionality in Taxon Works that isn't in uh, the UCD uh, London. So uh, we, the data tables reported to uh, uh, Taxon Works in 2019. Uh, we spent about two years at least uh, debugging and ground proofing and working on the model. We continue to meet mm -hmm. weekly. And our idea is that uh, this is going to be a, an ongoing community curated uh, uh, resource. So, so far we have about 55 project members of which maybe a dozen have been actively curating data. That's your five minute mark, Jim. So okay. You know. Uh, yeah, well, I'll go very quickly then. I think Harry's going to talk more about this. Uh, because this is a, a, a group uh, effort, uh, we're, 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 we're making extensive use of tags and taxon works uh, to, uh, to, to, to handle the workflow for uh, references. And so you can, see the, you can see the tags there. I'll just skip over that. We really need a simplified public interface to engage biological control research and other people working on, on, uh, on calcidoids. And uh, we could use more control over reporting functions. And uh, it would be particularly nice if taxon work could aggregate uh, host associations and geographic records uh, across taxonomic levels. And I think Harry is gonna have a lot more to say about this uh, in his presentation. So with that, I'll stop, thank you. Thanks, Jim. There'll be many questions. John? Do you want me to go now or at the end? Now, please, since Jim's okay. point that you're okay, connected. Let me, let me see if I can stop sharing. Okay, um, everybody can see my slides and everything? All good. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna reinforce what Jim said. Those are my cute little wasps down there that I work on. These are little parasites. That's, a, that's an American dime for you who uh, wanna get that reference point. Uh, and also this idea that they're all parasit, most of them are parasitoids. So the host information is essential and to be able to get that out to the public is one of our driving forces behind uh, developing these databases. Um, just to give you an overview of the good parts and, and also a few of the bad parts about taxon works, uh, this is our entry screen to browse nomenclature. I would say overall nomenclature is working really well. Um, it's not easy in, in taxon works to jump around from place to place, which I think is getting a little bit better, but as you get to know the database, it becomes a little bit more natural. Um, we're talking about a group where you can accurately get 2,196 genera and 28,042 valid species uh, names on this. Couple of points on this one is, if we look at this little stats sheet down in the lower left, we don't have valid species or genera in there, which is probably the most important information that we might want to have. Um, and on the other side, um, when I look at the nomenclature page, I'm really sort of not getting a lot of information there. I don't know what the type information is. I don't get the biological information. I don't know the geographical information. I have to go somewhere else and I have to know where to go, um, which everybody in Taxon Works that uses it knows where to go now. Um, before I go back to that, I want to look at uh, just what Jim mentioned about sources. And I got to say that Taxon Works 
for looking at sources or literature, uh, however you want to use the name, uh, finding it's easy, adding it's easy, adding a PDF or making it public or not, or viewing or downloading a PDF. Those are all just wonderful uh, aspects of the project. Um, and adding tags for projects, which Jim briefly mentioned, is actually really important. So just one of those little tag pinwheels. With those tags, we can then go into filter sources and we can grab things and see all those little colored bars down there are tags that we have. Here I've tagged the chapter uh, Eutricus Somatity for a book. I can immediately grab all those references, put them into a single place. I can then uh, format those references and, and choose a particular style uh, of output. So the Chalcedonia of the World uh, database with book we're working on. Uh, and also I can look at Bibtex uh, file exports that I can bring into EndNotes or Zotero or whatever I want to do uh, to be able to use that in, again, in, in literature manipulation or, or whatever I want to do. So I would say the sources is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, okay, back to the OTU page, so that place where you know you have to go to for all of that other information, which is something Dimitri showed uh, earlier, or Chris. Sorry. Um, and then this is sort of a, an example of the complexity of a taxon, which is a nightmare, uh, which includes all of this information that has to be sort of consumed on an OTU page, which is not exactly that easy. But what we have is on the left hand side, we have sources for taxonomy and other references. Hard to follow in a complex synonymy and you can turn on notes, which is uh, sort of helpful, but it'd be nice to have turned on initially. Um, and the topics in there, you tag individual taxa by topics uh, as opposed to tags for sources or, or references. Uh, the type information is, is, is you know, exceptional where you can add the type images, you can add all the type information, have it really available. This is not found in taxon in the UCD database that Jim talked about. Um, it has these required fields and I always get lost in, in understanding what's required and what's not required. And sometimes even understanding how to put in a collecting event. And I just wanted to point out that the NCBI database has some really nice things of having a, a sort of a required asterisk and also a little question mark that gives little pop-up windows that says what you should be putting into those little fields. So just something to keep, in, keep, in tra keep track of. Asserted distributions. I mean, I have no problem here. It lists all the countries. Uh, it's a little bit redundant sometimes when you see California, California. And if you have 50 records for California, all you're going to see is California records. But we do have a map, which is not something you find in the, in the California UCD uh, database. Biological associations. Uh, this is, again, as Jim mentioned, this is the most important thing that we're trying to amalgamate in terms of information. I was very happy to look at this the other day and find out that family name has been added here. So we can have an actual hierarchical way of looking at those taxa. And you can actually filter for those primary hosts. So I can get things organized into um, just filtering just by the primary hosts. Um, it's still not an alphabetical family name listing. Uh, and that's something that was mentioned that it'd be nice to have sort of a, a click button to say reorder this based on a certain uh, group. Um, okay, and a return to this and its public interface. We got the Universal Calculus database on the right and the taxon works on the left. I'd say again, they, you know, they're comparable, but I really love the tab format of the Universal Calcidoidea database to re readily go in and look at that public interface and how we're going to find and, and move between those different tabs of information. Um, this host list organized by family. The one thing about uh, taxon works is extremely redundant uh, by reporting every single record, which is really nice to have the references there, but also the UCD is giving you something in a more simplified format that sort of amalgamates all the information and compresses it into, into what's actually relevant. Uh, in terms of distribution, again, the redundancy uh... between the two, and I'm almost done, don't worry. Um, and it, I think you can see the differences between the two databases. And lastly, this is a, my sort of desire is it'd be nice to have a taxon page added to all of this, something which amalgamates and reduces the data down to something which is more simplified. And also we need to, uh, the ability to search parasitoids of hosts, as Jim mentioned, the ability to do regional lists, making data hierarchical, um, where we can look at, say, a, a genus and find out what its worldwide distribution is based on the species information, distribution maps and images of, of info and type material. And again, that's it. And thank you very much to Matt Yoder. Matt Yoder has been a real key to this whole thing in migrating this database over. And I really want to thank him for all of his work and also Deb and Roger Burks and Luke Crestline and others. And uh, we have a ghost tax of which we can talk about in private sometime. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks a lot. In this whirlwind tour, um, Heidi, you are up next. Good morning, everyone. Um, I've been asked to share a little bit about the way that I use TaxonWorks. 
Um, I'm working on more than one project in Taxon Works, but today I'm going to take you on a short tour of the catalog I am building. The goal of this project is the creation of the complete classification history of Isoptera, as well as the complete uh, published history of the group. And while this endeavor is massive in scope and not near completion, I can give you an idea of what the finished product will look like based on what is completed so far. So when I sign in to the project I'm working on, this is the screen that you see is what I would see. Um, you can, there's a huge number of tasks available to you in Taxon Works, and you can indicate your favorites by highlighting these little stars here. And so this is my favorites page. These are my, uh, the tasks I use the most, and these are the data cards that I use the most. So I'm going to start off talking to you a little bit about data entry when it comes to uh, creating a catalog. And I'll do that by clicking on the browse nomenclature uh, task here, and then I'm going to type in the name of a genus that I want to take you guys to look at. So we'll go and look at the genus Mastotermes. Um, this first screen shows what has been entered in the nomenclatural history to date for this name. On the left are depicted the children underneath this genus, and I can select to view all the valid species, um, those that are currently invalid, or both by using these buttons over here on the left. I want you to note that the name or the screen behind the name at the top of this screen is white in color. This is a quick indicator for the user that this name is currently valid. And you can also go over to the right hand side here and look at the summary box, which also, also tells you that this name is valid. Um, if we go, uh, this header will actually change color if the name is currently invalid and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. Everything about this entry could be either edited or added to by clicking on the edit button up here in the upper right. That will take us to the edit text on name screen. Here we can change or add anything from the parent, the status, the relationship or classification. And I'll scroll down here and show you the different fields where these, this type of data can be entered or edited. You could also enter anything about the gender, the form or the etymology of the name if known. When required for any of these pieces of information for a source to be given, then that source can also be entered and that information will be displayed on the previous screen. For example, if you look at the type section here, I've entered the type species for this genus. And if I go back to the previous screen, you'll notice that the first entry in the history here indicates what the type species is. I wanted to take you next uh, uh, to look at an example of a name that's currently invalid. So we'll just go down and look at Hungaricus. I want you to know immediately that the background banner is turned to this sort of tannish beige color. And so again, you can tell at a glance that you're looking at a name that is not currently valid, but you could also go over and look at the summary box and it will also tell you that the name is not valid and will also tell you what the currently valid name is. What's interesting or really nice about uh, Taxon Works is as you're entering these citations, the references will appear down below. And if you wanted to go and read in more detail why Emerson had um, synonymized Hungaricus with Croaticus, then you could go down and look for the serial uh, radial annotator beside the uh, Emerson reference, click on it. Here under documentation, if you see that there is an entry, then this paper is available for you to look at. You click on that and you'll see that this paper is available. You could either open the PDF and uh, read it uh, in our PDF viewer, or you could use the download button and um, download it onto your own device. So um, especially if you're needing to look up specific details about certain publications for your research, um, if those papers have been entered onto Taxon Works, they're readily available for you to uh, go read, or read further what a previous researcher had to say. Um, I want to take you over briefly to give you a look at what how hom homonymy is handled. Here under Fatulus, uh, you will see that here we have a history of the ongoing record of the uh, original name, that it was discovered to be a homonym, and then that a replacement name was published. And again, you could go down and look at the references and get further details about the thinking behind um, or read details about the publication. Mm. 
Uh, a little, I just want to tell you a little bit of the difference between the nomenclature page and what the, I like to refer to as the biology page. So here we have the nomenclatural history, but if we go up here and click on the OTU button, we'll be taken to a screen that's going to show us a very different view of the publications that have been entered. So we can use the all button to see all publications that have been entered that concern the name Master Termitidae. Uh, we could click on the nomenclature button, which gives us a repeat view of the previous screen. But if we go over here to the biology button, you can see every paper that's uh, ever been published regarding the term master termitidae. And uh, topics have been entered by these papers. Um, I've choos chosen to color code my topics, but both the creation of these topics and their color coding are at the uh, discretion of the user. So you'll see that for master termitidae, I've entered all publications through 1995. So I have about 26 years more uh, to go before all the papers will be in uh, regarding this term. So um, I'll just close uh, with sort of a few summary, uh, brief summary re remarks. Um, I think the strengths of uh, taxon works in the task of cataloging are showing the tremendous amounts of information at a glance and the many, many features that it offers to uh, researchers, a tiny fraction of which I've had time to demonstrate today. I would say its drawbacks are similar to those that are associated with any powerful tool, namely that it's, uh, it places labor intensive demands on the user and a steep learning curve is required to use it to its best efficacy. So in short, I would say if you put a great deal into taxon works, you can get a great deal out of it. And so I'd be happy to answer any questions anyone might have regarding cataloging in taxon works during the question and answer session. Thanks everybody. Wonderful, Heidi, thanks very much. Kojin. Hello. So yeah, good morning or good afternoon. My name is Kojin Kanda. I'm a postdoc with the USDA Agricultural Research Services and the Systematic Entomology Lab based out of the Natural History Museum in Washington, DC. Um, my taxonomic expertise are on darkling beetles, um, but currently I'm a postdoc working on these really gaudy jewel beetles in the genus Agrylus. Um, so sort of my journey to taxon works for specimen digitization is probably fairly relatable to a lot of people. Um, I started out my grad work working on just developing my own sort of FileMaker Pro specimen database, taking, you know, logging my locality data, my specimen data, and I can, you know, click and see what photos I have associated with that specimen and so on and so forth. But eventually, you know, you run out of time to maintain these personal databases. So for my um, postdoc, first postdoc, um, I joined a lab that was actively using MX. And that's kind of what got me into the um, Taxon Works framework. Um, let me go back to my slides. As a user, I guess my user type is a taxonomic systematics researcher in a, you know, individual versus small lab group setting. And especially now during COVID when everybody's sort of locked down, um, trying to coordinate a decentralized network of people working on common projects. And one of my, one of the, when I entered this sort of framework, um, where I was kind of different from Wooly and Herity is that I didn't have a lot of legacy specimen data or legacy um, databases to really worry about, you know, maybe a couple thousand records and um, MX and my personal database is all I had to deal with. So I was kind of entering new and I wanted a platform where I can manage all my specimen taxonomic morphological data. And so that's what I wanted, a platform to share data for taxonomic and phylogenetic projects, sort of like a Dropbox with taxonomy. Keep track, track of records and project progress. So, you know, this is probably really familiar to folks is having spreadsheets where this is a molecular project where I'm tracking what genes I've sequenced for what taxa, but, you know, it's just a spreadsheet, right? And also, you know, I wanted this platform to facilitate new data generation and also store and summarize and organize previously published data. So that's what I kind of wanted to demonstrate quickly. So first of all, for the taxonomy, you heard a lot of um, examples of catalogs now, but um, as I said, I didn't really have much of a 
starting point for making a catalog. So I was starting with it fresh, just you know, PDFs and going from there. And creating a framework from that was really, really simple in Taxon Works. And all you really need is, you know, take your favorite catalog PDF, run a couple of scripts to make a tab delimited file that has the taxonomy in it. And then you can batch upload this into Taxon Works and you have a starting point there for um, building a catalog or building a taxonomy and so on and so forth. But um, I wanted to just so, show some of the tools I use in the browse OTU panel that um, Harity had touched on. So right now we're kind of this group Agrilis. And before starting this project, my knowledge of this genus was very, very poor. So I needed a place to just track you know, my notes on the species, my notes as I generate a species. So, you know, downloading data, like these are images of holotype, lectotypes from the MCZ database that I downloaded and we uploaded for easy reference. Um, transcriptions of original descriptions with, and you can link them to the actual publication. And if you have a PDF, now I can access the PDF there as well really useful for me was a lot of times in taxonomic treatments, you know, they have some um, diagnoses where they compare to species. So in the taxon works framework, I can link it to the other species I've included in here. And it takes me to the data I have for that other species as well. So now I have the redescription of that Agrilus impexus, which is in the comparative notes with Agrilus objectus. Um, and, you know, as Harity mentioned, especially when you're getting started with a new group, just having the asserted distributional data and being able to capture sort of biological data in a really structured format was very, very useful. Um, another aspect I want to touch on that I mentioned in my needs for this project was I have a couple of people helping me on this project. We're all kind of teleworking a lot. I wanted a way to share data. One of the things we're working on with this genus is a catalog of types housed at the National Museum. Um, so I go in maybe a couple of days a week, take a bunch of photos, and then what? Then I can upload my data to Taxon Works. And so here's an example. Um, let's see. Sorry, I have a lot of tabs open. So using the comprehensive specimen digitization tab that somebody had mentioned previously, I can just upload my photos onto um, the species file group server. And the great thing about Taxon Works, and this is a contrast to like scan say, is that the files are stored in their original size and format. So the, these are thumbnails of the original 170 meg stacked photos I took of the type. And there you can see it there. And then my colleague from home could just download the type image, you know, do some color correction or whatever, add a scale bar and then re-upload. Now this is a 250 meg file with, you know, multiple layers on it up on Tasson Works. And even though we're not working off the same computer at work, we're all teleworking, we can share our data and make progress on this project, even with limited museum access. Um, another kind of um, benefit to our workflow that I want to highlight is, um, you know, so we've been taking lots of label photos, we want to transcribe the label photos, what do we do? So using the tags that somebody had, that people have been mentioning, label. I can search for all the labels that are now in here and I can have colleagues go home, download it and transcribe the data directly into Taxon Works. Um, so yeah, th that's sort of my current uses of Taxon Works. Um, I don't wanna hammer the point that everybody has been making, but one of the improvements I would really love to see is to easily expose the data to the public and there are ways uh, that I'm sure Matt will talk about this much more to do this using API calls and things like that. But you know, for somebody who's not very familiar with that kind of um, scripting language in Ruby, it is still a bit tricky to expose this data to the public. And another aspect that um, I would like to see added to it, which I've also been talking to Matt about is, there's a lot of tools being developed for storing morphological tools and there's discussions about you know, incorporating ontologies for morphological stuff. 
But adding a layer of data to our specimens that covers our molecular workflows, whether it's you know, DNA extraction, RNA extractions, quality control measures for that, and maybe even a way to link the specimens to our raw sort of um, fast Q files and stuff like that, which are being hosted on either our own server or um, the species, species file group server would be a real benefit as well. So yeah, that's about all I have to say. Thanks. Thanks, Kojin. That was great. Um, and next, uh, Michelle. While you're setting that up, I would mention too that several people, Kojin, uh, who signed up for the Taxon Works Together event mentioned wanting to be able to do what you're just were describing. Yeah, like, and we've spent time looking at some of the Darwin Core extensions of it as yeah, well. Sure. And you know, yeah. there are okay. some fields that we also needed to talk to the Darwin Core folks yeah. that they need to fix and stuff. But Got you know. it. we can continue that Screen shortly. Two. Good morning. My name is Michelle. I work at Illinois Natural History Survey Insect Collection. Um, I work as an assistant to the collection manager. Um, I don't have an official title, I guess. Um, I work off of a lot of different grants or several different grants and do different projects, but they all are related around collection management type activities. Um, I was asked specifically to come because apparently I have the absolute most hours spent in tax on works. I don't think I do the most with it, but I definitely spend a lot of time in it. Um, one of the reasons for that is because over COVID, we all went home and I do not do personal research. I really enjoy collection management. So I spent the last you know, year and a half doing a lot of databasing. Um, I'll try to give kind of a brief overview. Um, I've been here since 2013. When I first came, we were using Access and FileMaker. Um, separate databases, which was sort of confusing, annoying. Uh, I know FileMaker, one of the issues is it couldn't be upgraded, uh, lots of stuff like that. Access can only be accessed by one person on one computer at a time which does not work for a collection database. Um, and also the fact that they were active databases, which means they saved automatically a lot of times. So it was really easy to miss mistakes. Um, I will say the things that I liked about Access and FileMaker were the, um, we did, we used Access to profile drawers and file racks um you know, on a large scale and we don't have that ability now um and printing labels um and i'll come back to that in a moment so now taxon works um there's a lot of stuff in one database that we can all use at the same time um all of the previous databases at least i've been using have all been able to be pulled into taxon works it hasn't been perfect, but they, as far as I know, we haven't lost any data. Um, there are a lot of filter options and browse options in Taxon Works. So the ability to find my data um, is a lot easier. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, but usually it's a lot easier. Um, I appreciate the addition of images and the matrices. Um, that was something I guess we could have had in FileMaker, but we didn't. It's much nicer and easier in Taxon Works. Um, and I put as a pro the way data is related in the user interface, which could be a pro or a con. Um, there is a steep learning curve, but I will say that anything that you do enough times, it just you know becomes easier every time. There are certain aspects of Taxon Works that I use a lot. Um, and those have definitely become you know, quicker and easier over time. Um, the things that I need or cons, and Matt's gonna laugh at this, my stupid unit tray labels. So before Taxon Works, I literally 
printed thousands of unit trait labels. Um, I redid the entire Diptera order and did all the unit trays. Um, FileMaker made it very, very easy for me to literally like click, I need this label and it was already set up and it, they look really nice. The same thing with the drawer labels um, and the vial rack labels. So we have done a workaround using Word um, so I can print, but I have to literally type out every label instead of it pulling the information automatically. Um, the other thing that I could really use, I can only be logged into one project at a time. So if I'm logged into insect collection and I want to work on one of the different grants on like Dimitri's database, um, I have to use a different computer or a different browser or else I have to be very careful to make sure that I know exactly where I stopped in my inset collection work because it logs me out. And then when I go back to use it, I have to re-log in and figure out where I was. Um, I think that's about all I have. I'll be happy to talk with people later about how mm. I use Taxon Works. Thanks, Deb. Um, so yeah. And thank you for coming and attending this. Thanks very much. Thanks, Michelle. Oh, great stuff. Mm -hmm. Maria Marta. Okay. Um, I am from Argentina, from my work at the Museum of La Plata, and I am a researcher at Systematics, uh, working on phylogeny and evolutionary biology of Orthoptera. And the way we use uh, taxon works is to produce uh, uh, our database, and that is the Orthoptera species file, that is uh, uh, the world's Orthoptera taxonomic database that was originally based on eight printed volumes by Dan Oti, with the first online version developed for one volume done by Naskreski from Harvard. Then David Eats, who was the former leader of the species file group, developed the first online version for the eight original volumes of the Orthoptera catalog. And since 2010, we administrate and curate the contents of this database at the Museum of La Plata. Uh, this database has a full taxonomic and synonymic information and a full classification for all known and described orthoptera taxa, both extant and fossils. And it has extensive references, images of type specimens, so also images of specimens in the field, morphological diagnostic characters, sound recordings, and also information on specimen records to display the maps and asserted distributions for each taxa. Uh, it has turned out to be worldwide used by the orthopterist community, and uh, the orthoptera classification is the one that is being always used for contrasting any new phylogenetic hypothesis of this group. Currently, the data has been migrated to taxon works in a sandbox instance, not production yet, and we are still correcting some errors still updating OSF or the orthoptera species file with the old software, the species file software. So we cannot take a, already a full advantage of all the capabilities and functionalities of taxon works. Uh, the public view has to be developed before we can go to production. And, but anyhow, we already see several advantages of moving to taxon works. Uh, for instance, the development of the IPIs will allow to retrieve the structure information processable by external systems and softwares. The development of the Darwin Core specimen data import that will allow us uh, to populate in an easier and faster way the distributional maps. Everything that is dealing with matrices, the image matrices that today the uh, um, Dietrich show and the interactive keys, that was something that species file program or software did not have. Uh, we, we have some matrix, some keys 
but these were not based on matrices. Also, the programs and features that uh, are related to integrated GIS, all the digitization workflows that has comprehensive specimen digitization task. This was not developed or so complete in species file F uh, software. Everything that is related uh, to collection management, law and handling, we did not have or do not have in a species file before. And all, all the features they related to help the help online, tool tips with complete references, and also photographs, for instance, that has associated metadata. So the program taxon works is really much more complete. And we can I see that as a taxonomist, we will be able to do much more things than maintaining our database, our uh, catalog. The advantages, we also see several advantages compared to species file related to the editorial task. It has many dynamic functionalities like the radial annotator, object radial, the pinboard, PDF view, document viewer, clipboard, shortcuts, everything that will make it easier to add the data uh, into our database, into uh, uh, taxon works. Also, there's a huge advantage compared to species file regarding the possibility to customize the interfaces, the helpful features that I mentioned before. Something really wonderful uh, is related to the addition and adding sources and references that can be exported from big text and can be created directly a source can be created directly from a DOI that we did not have before. Also, everything related to the handling of specimens and collecting events um, are um, much will be or are easier than what we were having before. Well, the filter and searching is much more powerful than a species file. And what are we leaving? Okay, it's a species file is simpler but it covers almost all our needs for developing and maintaining our taxonomic database. The users, both editors and the community will have to learn about this new uh, platform. And we, are, we have lost, so we will lose all the keys that we have in the species file. And so we hope that uh, to reach a wider audience and also that in the orthopterists will use uh, their taxon words for their uh, own research projects. That's it. Okay. Many thanks for that, You're welcome. Maria Marta. That was quite a tour.